Good morning. I'm in beautiful San Diego today, helping a friend. She uh, must be desperate because she, uh, I guess today is the anniversary of when the Marine Corps started. So they celebrate the Marine birthday today. So there are somewhere between 450 and 700 Marines uh, having their ball this evening with spouses and uh, partners, all that stuff. And um, she's the photographer. So she asked me to come help. And I always, you know, want to help a friend if I can. And she's taught me a lot about photography. So I'm happy to be of service for her. Um, and while I was crashing on her couch last night, I was watching some TED Talks and things. And um, one of them, I believe, it might have been you, Artem, or Kim that shared it, um, was from a gentleman who travels a lot with the Dalai Lama. And I had a little personal story that triggered that relevance to me. Um, it's something that I have experienced. And the gentleman was, basically the talk was, it's more dangerous to pretend you know than it is to be ignorant. And how I experienced that firsthand was when I was on the Soul Roll, my 500 mile electric skateboard ride. I was standing in front of a woman, bawling her eyes out, because she had to take her dog to the shelter. She didn't know what else to do. She felt completely hopeless. And why that talk last night meant so much to me was because that woman had gone through three trainers, three professionals whose sole responsibility is to make sure that dog stays in that home. And I know what everybody says, we tend to blame the owners. They probably didn't do this. They probably didn't do that. Um, but from what I heard from her, she put a lot of effort in. She put a lot of effort into ball chasing, tug, tools, external responsibility of the dog. All of those things for that particular dog put that dog in a situation where they might die. <sighs> the dog learned to challenge their humans, get pushy around the dinner. Could you imagine your kid can't eat safely his own dinner? A stressful time in that child's life was something that was supposed to make him powerful. Substance, strength, food, health. But for them it was a struggle. It's more powerful. It's more powerful to just say, I don't know. So, what I think about is those three people, professionals, are out there today exchanging knowledge for money and every one of those people could potentially end up in the same place. The woman had an a interesting history after talking with her for about six seconds. I realized she was not from America, she was from Ireland. and. Uh, She said two things that were pretty interesting. One was it didn't feel right, what she was doing. It's not the way they did it as a kid. So first off, if it doesn't feel right, that could be a clue. It could be a clue. Now, I'm not saying that if somebody asked you to do something that puts you out of a place of comfort that they're automatically wrong. This person had a lot of skills as far as 
realizing the possible nature or the 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 respect for nature that her father showed when they were raising dogs they had working dogs i think they were border collies uh, they had sheep and and some things like that so the dogs were working dogs so that was her first trigger but she ignored her own feeling because she had a professional in front of her somebody that was their job was to keep that dog out of the shelter to provide the relief the people needed from their stress their fear and the other thing that was kind of interesting is she said if my dad knew that my own dog bit me he probably would have taken this dog out behind the shed and shot him and I think she was surprised by my answer when I said and he probably would have been right and the reason is the dog would have never bit you the dog would have never challenged you unless he was genetically broken so it probably would have been rationalized the dog probably would have been mentally dysfunctional and when I said that to her she it, it hit her she realized what was happening um, so she didn't want to leave the dog at the shelter that day she was willing to obviously continue to foster the dog until they could got, get a home for the dog so she said what can I do while while we're having this it's 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 really uh, scary for my family and I said it's not you already did you already did so much that's the problem so we need to undo the things that you did so stop doing the things that are causing your problems but she didn't know they were causing her problems because the information from the professional said otherwise every time she had a weak moment the dog tried to climb on her when she was crying so that was a huge indication to what the dog felt her responsibility was so that's something we talked about if your dog is looking into the world and you're giving them affection you're telling them what they're doing is what you want and if you're not clear in what they're thinking then you could be causing your own problem so how was she feeling she was feeling uneasy sad hopeless so she was trying to cope herself and we all know it's been proven when you pet your dog when people touch dogs it does amazing things to us inside it changes the way we feel the problem is we can't sacrifice what the dog is thinking for that we have to take control of our own emotions so if my dog is looking at me then I can give him love or my version of love touch so we have to be clear on what our dogs are thinking when we interfere the other thing I told her to do is stop creating challenge for yourself with your dog if we're reaching for the same object and pulling and tugging what do you think that's gonna mean when we're out on a walk and my dog sees another dog and wants to get over there I represent challenge to them that's when your dog snaps at you to discipline you to say get out of here you're frustrating me because I want to get over there and because I'm used to challenging you because this is what we do why wouldn't I do it in other situations so this dog was very confused the other thing we told her get a muzzle get a muzzle so when that dog comes near your child when he's eating his dinner he feels powerful to say get out of here I don't want you near my plate without the threat of that dog's mouth it just boggles my mind sometimes how a muzzle is something that people don't even consider the one thing they're fear fear of fearful of is the dog's mouth and we have a tool that can just make that not even a thought they don't even have to worry about it but yet we never think about it so
So three things that are so simple. Two of them involve doing less work. Two, less work. But it doesn't mean that it's not, it's not uh, hard to do. You know, my dog enjoys it. She loves chasing the ball. Yeah, and serial killers love killing, and lions love chasing down zebras. It doesn't mean it's going to create a social animal. It doesn't mean you're going to be able to eat at your dinner table and not feel like you're being hunted by something you brought into your own home to make your life better. So I think we have to, I mean, and it's the, the problem is social media. We all have to, you know, we all feel like we have to be these, you know, great thought leaders because somebody else is. I got news for you. Most people don't know what the hell they're doing. And this is proof of it. There was three of them that didn't know what the hell they were doing. Set this woman up for complete failure. They paid money and got misery. That's sad. So if you're a young trainer, if you're a 30 year old, 30 year experience trainer, I'm gonna tell you, it's okay to say I don't know because the Dalai Lama does it all the time and I'm pretty sure He's had more experiences than all of us in this live feed combined, all my Instagram followers combined. It's okay to say, I don't know. You don't have to be a thought leader all the time. You don't have to have the answer. The fact is, if you haven't experienced it and you're talking about it, you're a liar because you don't know. You don't know. And you could be causing more harm than you are good unintentionally, but you're still causing harm. There still has to be responsibility. So if you have interest in that video, it was very powerful. I mean, somebody that travels with the Dalai Lama all the time, I'm sure has um, some interesting perspectives and I'm, I appreciated that one from him. Are you doing more harm than good by pretending like you know?